Hello, students. Here's a video guide for your reading responses. You will need two documents for this first one. In the content folder, definition, you'll find the passage for the first reading response. It's called Homeless by Anna Quinlan. Okay, so you need that. But you also need the directions. And you can find that under Reading Response tab. Here are the directions or the guidelines, and here's where you'll submit the assignment. So let me open this up for you. Okay. The purpose of reading responses is actually to help you interact with the text and to think about it. You're not necessarily analyzing the way the writer writes. You're trying to figure out or infer or uncover the writer's main purpose. Um, what is she trying to do for us? What is she trying to teach us or tell us about life? Okay, and so if you look at the guidelines, it's pretty specific. You need to make sure you have 600 words minimum. You need to make sure that they're submitted before class begins because we'll come in and talk about the passage at the beginning of class. Okay, and we will also use these passages to help us with our own writing. So it's important that you take the time to look at it and then try to figure out the lessons that the writer's trying to provide for us from her experience or his experiences. Okay, now you should have an intro, an introduction, and basically you'll just provide a little bit of background information and a thesis statement where you talk about the lesson the purpose of the passage. This right here is an example of a body paragraph. This is probably half a body paragraph where I have discussed the topic sentence, which is my first lesson, the first lesson that she's trying to teach me from this passage, and then I embed text evidence. And if you look at this, the text is really small. Like here's just one word, and here's a little phrase and then here's another little part. Well that's the text evidence. I'm blending summary with actual text citation and so I'd like for you to practice that and then the rest of this paragraph is analysis. Okay and so like I said this is probably half of a body paragraph. I would add another chunk. I call these chunks. Chunks where you have evidence and analysis. Evidence and analysis. And so you would probably have at least two chunks, maybe three in each body paragraph. Okay, now these are the specifics. Check it over. Now these questions, you're not trying to answer these when you write your response. I just gave you these questions to inspire you, to help you think about possible purposes, um, what you're trying to get out of the writing. And so this top question says, what have you learned about social issues, morality, humanity, suffering, resilience, mental health, personality, or character development? So those could be some big, broad topics that the writer's trying to inform us. Okay. The second question is, what's the meaning of life? How should people live? Maybe she's trying to teach us something about living. What do we need to value? What do we need to care about? Okay. Uh, sometimes you'll read a piece that's a little bit controversial, and so it may clash with what you believe. And so that would be something that you could address. You know, like these are her beliefs, and you could talk about that and maybe connect it to your own. But I would not say I believe this or anything like that. Just keep it in mind. If you have a really strong emotional reaction to a piece, it's probably or it could be because it's in conflict with how you think or feel or view the world. Okay, and this question is kind of similar. This question asks you to see if your views or opinions were actually changed by the text or challenged by the text. And so um, you can discuss how it communicated with you. When it, what did it make you realize? Maybe you at least gained a new understanding or perspective of someone else's view. Okay, and then the last question or the last lesson you could talk about is what did you learn and how it relates to um, something you care about, perhaps. Now, this outline is just a suggestion. It will help you organize your reading response so that it's fluid and 
structured. You have the introduction, which could, um, which provides background information. And so this says key characters and events. Most of the reading responses we'll, we will read will be uh, nonfiction. So their characters would be people and the events are what's happening in the piece. Don't spend a lot of time on that. We've already read, we've all read, or I've certainly read all of the um, pieces you'll be discussing. So it's not necessary to give me a whole lot of background information or summary. I'd rather have you discuss what you've learned. And then I would think for 600 words, you would need at least two body paragraphs. You may need a bit more. And each body could be about what's the lesson. What did you learn? What did you learn in the first lesson? What did you learn for the second lesson? And then you wrap it up. So these are the guidelines. And then you will type it up using MLA format and submit it in reading responses. Now the first piece is over, it's called Homeless by Anna Quinlan, and I'm not going to read all of this to you, I just want to kind of get you started. It says right here, her name was Anne, and we met in the Port Authority bus terminal several Januarys ago. I was doing a story on homeless people. She said I was wasting my time talking to her. She was just passing through, although she'd been passing through for more than two weeks. To prove, me, to, prove to me that this was true. She rummaged through a tote bag and a manila envelope and finally unfolded a sheet of typing paper and brought out her photographs. They were not pictures of family or friends or even a dog or cat, its eyes brown red and the flash bulbs light. They were pictures of a house. It was like a thousand houses in a hundred towns, not suburb, not city, but somewhere in between, with aluminum siding and chain link fence and narrow driveway running up to one car garage and a patch of backyard. The house was yellow. I looked on the back for a date or a name, but neither was there. There was no need for discussion. I knew what she was trying to tell me for something I had often felt. She was not adrift, alone, anonymous, although her bags and raincoat with a grime shadowing its creases had made me believe she was. She had a house, or at least once upon a time, she had had one. Inside were curtains, a couch, a stove, pot holders. You are where you live. She was somebody. Now you can read the rest of this, and um, Quinlan does a really nice job of describing a typical house. And um, I would think that the point of her writing this essay is to show her readers, or to let her readers know that homeless people are people. They're the average person who lives somewhere at one time in their lives, and somehow, ended up homeless. Their house is gone. They've lost it and they still carry it with them. And so that would be the lesson that I think she's trying to tell me. She wants us to realize that the homeless people are not just some anonymous random person living on the streets. It could be anybody. It could be us. And so she's trying to personalize and or she's trying to personalize the homeless by giving providing us with a story of one homeless person. And so that is one lesson that I could write about. Okay, so that's what you need to do. You need to read, you need to think of the lesson she's trying to teach us, and then you would talk about it and write about it and embed the text evidence and try to think about, you know, the emotions or action that the reader's trying to inspire, or sorry, that the writer's trying to inspire in the reader, okay? So, good luck, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the piece.